Longines is a brand that flies under the radar a bit for me. When I think of high-end watch brands, I'll be honest that it's not one of the first that comes to mind. But the fact is that Longines has a deep history and a vast and varied collection of compelling timepieces. This watch right here was recently released in spring 2022, and I think it represents the best aspects of this brand. Today we take a look at the Longines Spirit Zulu Time. There are only a handful of watch brands that are older than Longines, primarily Blancpain, Vacheron, and Breguet. The company began in 1832 in Switzerland, and has been around longer than essentially all other significant brands, including the likes of Rolex, Patek, AP, Cartier, and Omega. Indeed, a fun factoid relating to Longines is that it currently owns the oldest registered trademark with the World Intellectual Property Organization, dating all the way back to 1893. That is nuts. While its logo has changed over time, the winged hourglass logo has been in constant use since 1867. The brand has a deep history in timing landmark, historical, and sporting events, and developing cutting-edge timekeeping devices to accurately measure tenth, hundredth, and even a millionth of a second. The brand has historical ties with the likes of Amelia Earhart, Charles Lindbergh, and other early aviators. Let's just say it has some serious heritage. But heritage can only take you so far. Along with many other brands during the height of the quartz crisis in the early 1980s, Longines was greatly impacted and eventually was acquired by the Swatch Group, where it currently sits along with other major brands including Breguet, Blancpain, Glasuto Original, and Omega. Despite not immediately coming to my mind, Longines is one of the largest watch companies in the world based on sales. In today's competitive watch market, the bottom line is that brands need to continue to deliver compelling pieces to the market. Longines currently has at least 20 distinct collections, generally split between classic and sport. Within the sport line are some of the more well-known collections like the Conquest, Hydro Conquest, Avigation, and the Spirit. The Spirit collection alone has numerous unique references that range from chronographs, simple three hands, and these Zulu Time GMTs. Zulu Time is the military name for GMT, and is used primarily in aviation, marine environments, and the military. Greenwich Mean Time is set at the Prime Meridian, or zero degrees longitude, which gets shortened to zero or Z time in a military NATO vernacular, Zulu Time. When the Zulu Time was announced this past spring, it made a pretty big splash and put Longines back on the forefront of watch collectors' minds. There are a few different variations of this reference, including this gray and green version, black dial, black bezel version, and a blue dial and blue bezel version, each on a bracelet or a leather strap. Given the spotlight that has been shown in this reference since its release, the question becomes, is it just hype? I was able to get my hands on this gray dial and green bezel version on a bracelet, so let's take a closer look. The case on this watch comes in at 42mm in diameter, 13.9mm in thickness, and a technical lug-to-lug -lug of 49mm. But due to the solid end lengths on the bracelet, the watch has an effective length of about 55mm. It is a pretty sizable watch to be honest. I have a 16cm wrist that is disproportionately wide across the top, and this watch fits, but just barely. The case is stainless steel and has a 24 click colored ceramic bidirectional GMT bezel. The case has crisp angles and is mostly brushed, but has some nice polishing on the bevels between the lugs and the sides. There is a screw down crown at the 3 o'clock with the historical logo, and the watch has a respectable and utilitarian water resistance of 100 meters. The dial is protected by a scratch resistant sapphire crystal with several layers of anti reflective coating on both sides. The weight of the watch on the steel bracelet lists for about 164 grams, but size to my wrist is a reasonable 156 grams. The dial in this specific reference is a very attractive anthracite gray color that shows best in direct light, but may look a bit darker in lower lights. There is a gold colored chapter ring encircling the dial with scallop diamond shaped inserts every 5 minute interval. Each hour is indicated by a beautiful polished gold applied Arabic marker in perfect size and font. The hands are a striking gold color. The second sand extends all the way to the edge of the dial with a diamond lollipop at the end, and the Zulu time has your typical triangle tip. At the 12 o'clock there is the Longines name and applied hourglass wing logo and the word automatic. At the 6 o'clock there are applied stars indicative of the spirit collection and text for Zulu time and chronometer. The hour marker and hands are filled with superluminova giving this great legibility in darkness. The font for the, f the, font for the hour markers and GMT bezel are a great size and shape in my opinion. 
and I really like how the hands are stacked in the middle of the dial from largest to smallest. The movement on this watch is touted as the in-house Longines L844.4. It is a self-winding mechanical movement beating at 25,200 vibrations per hour with a monocrystalline silicon balance spring providing anti-magnetism and a power reserve of approximately 72 hours. This watch is COSC certified which means it has an accuracy of minus 4 to plus 6 seconds a day. This is a true GMT movement that is best for traveling around the globe as it offers a quick side jumping local hour hand. So once you land a new time zone, you can easily set the local time at that location while keeping your Zulu hand set at the second time zone you were previously tracking. There is no quick set date or quick set for the Zulu hand, so setting the date requires you to spin the local hour hand around the dial until you land on the correct date, and setting the GMT hand requires you to move all hands using the third crown position. This movement has one of the smoothest and quietest winding feelings I've ever felt. It is actually very pleasing, offering the right amount of resistance without any grainy feeling. One negative thing I notice about this movement is that the rotor is loud, like really loud. When I compare it to my Breitling Super Ocean, it's noticeably louder with typical wrist movements. Which is a bit unfortunate, but not really a deal breaker in my view. The bracelet on this watch is really comfortable and looks amazing. It is almost entirely brushed, but has thin polished sections on the outer edges of the inner links and inner edges of the outer links. The links are not thick or chunky, indicative of a cheap bracelet. The lug width is 22 millimeters, but tapers down to about 17 and a half. Longines has incorporated a really easy to use quick change mechanism that retracts the spring bar with the push of a button. That is really nice to have. But the clasp is clearly where the company tried to save some money, and that's a bit unfortunate. It's not a bad clasp, it's just basic. There is no quick adjustment mechanism that allows for fluctuation in wrist size, but it does have five adjustment points that requires a spring bar tool. I guess if you're looking to save some money on a watch construction, the clasp is a reasonable place as it is less public facing, but I do really like having quick adjustment on my watches. In terms of value for money, this watch gets very high marks from me. There are not many true GMT automatic watches with an in-house movement for around $3,000. While there are some ostensibly more expensive models from more revered brands that you can get consistently at a discount at an AD or on the gray market, I think this watch can compete with those offerings. I think this is a competitive watch in that price range. In terms of looks, I think this piece and all the color variations are very handsome. It looks sporty but also sophisticated, regal, and of high quality. The movement checks a lot of boxes. It's in-house, it's a true GMT, it has anti-magnetic properties, and the power reserve is an impressive 72 hours. The winding on this watch is one of the smoothest I've ever felt, and the screw-down crown is also really seamless, and has never not glided easily into the threads. The bracelet on this watch is also comfortable and very good looking. There's a lot going on for this watch, and there aren't a ton of downsides. Yes, the clasp is not great, there's no quick set adjustment mechanism on the bracelet, which is a shame, the rotor is a bit noisy, and the length of the watch with the solid end lengths is significant, but doable for wrists around 15.5 or 16 centimeters. So all this is to say that I think, in this case, the attention this watch is getting is very much justified. If you're in the market for a true GMT around the $3,000 price point, you really should check this one out. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please consider leaving a thumbs up and a comment, and also consider becoming a subscriber. Thanks, and see you in the next one.